everybody. Let's talk about vectors. Uh, they are used in lots of disciplines. Physics, data science, machine learning, robotics, 3D modeling. We will mostly be talking about them as physicists talk about them. Um, the data science perspective is a little bit different, uh, and I would love to do a thing later about that. Um, but for the moment, let's dive right in. So a great way to think about vectors is they are arrows in space. And the arrow has a direction and a length. So what can you use this to think about? Um, it could be that this is an object and the vector represents a force acting on the object. So it could be something pushing the object in that direction. Or it could be a, a large gravitational source over here. So it's pulling the object in that direction. A thing to notice is that you could have two different objects and have the same force applied to both objects. And so I'm notating it this way. So you can tell that these arrows are pointed in the same direction because they have the same angle and they're the same length. And so we would call these the same vector, even though they're located in two different places on the plane. So that's the first thing to know about vectors is they don't have a particular place that they live. They're not centered anywhere. Instead, they're defined by uh, their starting and their ending points. So if you wanted to notate a vector in rectangular form, you could use triangle brackets and describe how far over and how far up do you have to go to get from the start to the end of the vector. So here I'm going over 3 and up 2, and you would notate it this way. Um, another note, you might notice that I have put a little thing above the vector. Um, that's an arrow, although you will also notice that I didn't have uh, both parts of the arrow, and that's conventional. Sometimes you'll see text with two parts of the arrow, um, but usually it'll look like this. So I've named the vector v. These are the same vector because they represent the same force acting on two different objects. What is that force? It's a force that's going to pull them in a particular direction, which I'm going to describe as 3 over and 2 up. Uh, longer vectors would represent stronger forces. Shorter vectors would represent weaker forces. You could also think about them not as force, but as a displacement, for example. So we're thinking uh, this is going to represent a motion. Uh, the object starts here, and at the end of a certain amount of time, we could call it one second, we want to say the object's going to end here. So we're describing that displacement. You could describe it as velocity. We're saying in one second, the object's going to travel that far. In a second second, it would travel this far. In another second, it would travel that far. So they could, you can see why they might be helpful. Another way of describing vectors is not using their rectangular components. These are called the x component and the y component because it's how far over, how far up. Um, the other way of describing a vector would be literally with its angle and the distance that you would move along that angle. Um, and that's called polar form. So polar form, you will have a distance and an angle, which gives you a direction, a distance and a direction. So for example, I could have, let's call this vector A. Um, the angle, which is always measured relative to the horizontal here, is 45 degrees. And let's say that the distance is a distance of 2. How would I notate that? I would say A equals distance 2, and the little angle symbol, and then 45 degrees. Both perspectives are helpful. Some things are easier to do thinking about them this way. Other things are easier thinking about them that way. If you want to rotate a vector, much easier to think about it in polar form. OK, last thing, magnitude of a vector tells you its length. Um, and it is notated this way. Let's make a little box. So with two vertical arrows, it sort of looks like absolute value. Um, because if you think, let's think for a minute about what does absolute value mean. I think a lot of students think about absolute value as it turns a number positive. Um, but really, I think a better way to think about absolute value is it tells you a distance from 0. So negative 3 here is telling you that this distance from 0 is 3. So same thing, this is telling you a distance. It's telling you like the difference between those two values. OK, so if magnitude is a length, how do we calculate the length? Well, you might notice that the length of this vector is the same as the hypotenuse of that right triangle. 
So you can just use the Pythagorean theorem. That's it. So it'll be 3 squared plus 2 squared. Uh, so let's see, 9 plus 4 is 13, so root 13. So that would be the, the magnitude. Um, and again, we'll use magnitudes in a lot of different contexts.